Alexander and the roster moves that we made. Hi, James. Understanding you're not a doctor, um, can you explain fascial disruption as opposed to muscle fiber disruption and offer any sort of a timeline as to when Verlander could return? Yeah, um, this was relatively good news is my understanding, um, but I, I am not a doctor, as you pointed out. I want to reemphasize that. Um, Justin will be available in a bit. I think he can explain some of the nuances better than I can, but the fact that there is no muscle fiber disruption uh, indicates a shorter healing time. Uh, the fascia is a different structure in the calf. Uh, and that appears to be where the disruption is. We will know a lot more about the return timeline. Uh, once we give the body about, you know, the first 48 to 72 hours to heal. Uh, but our hope and our expectation is that this should be relatively short term. Okay, Mark. James, how does this affect your rotation? That's something we're actively working through right now with our pitching coaches. Uh, we have been fortunate enough all season to have uh, six, uh, sometimes even more starting pitchers uh, who can help us go out there and win ball games. Um, so we are working on how this exactly is going to uh, affect the rotation. The off day yesterday, the off day Thursday, uh, the off day a week from Thursday, and our current roster and the expanded rosters on September 1st will all factor into that. But we don't have any finalized plans at this point. Okay, Adam Spillane. Uh, earlier in the year, uh, obviously there were different injuries, but earlier in the year, Oda Rizzi kind of suffered a, a lower leg injury and he was able to throw pretty quickly. How similar is just, um, I guess, kind of the process for what Oda Rizzi went through and what Verlander will have to go through? Well, what, despite the fact that they are in the same part of the body, uh, the actual uh, injury itself uh, is different. And so I think it's a bit of a false comparison to look at Oda Rizzi's uh, return to play procedure and JV's return to play procedure. Uh, we're going to treat JV's uh, as it is dictated by our doctors and the body. Um, and again, our hope is, uh, and our expectation is that this is a relatively short term, uh, return to play, but we do need to wait a, a few days just to see how his body reacts, uh, and to, uh, to determine next steps. Okay. Chandler. James, given uh, the luxury you guys have given yourselves in the West and the record you have, would you be willing to exercise more caution with him? Just bring him, bring him along slower, uh, that sort of thing? No, this decision is going to be made entirely based on how he feels uh, and the recommendations uh, from our doctors. So we are going to, uh, to treat this medically, uh, and the return to play will be dictated by that. Uh, you added Hunter Brown to your taxi squad today. Um, what is what are what are the plans for him uh, going forward? Yeah, Hunter has been told that our our expectation is to activate him on September first. Uh, we thought it was prudent to get him to the team uh, today to get around the guys, get to know the uh, the staff and the catchers uh, while he uh, gets himself ready. But the purpose of the taxi squad is to uh, acclimate him to the major league environment in anticipation of activation. Obviously, we have to wait until Thursday for that, but that is our expectation. That is what Hunter has been told. Okay, Adam Spillane. Can you give any sort of an update on Chaz McCormick and just what are your plans in, in center field? Can you say what your plans are in center field uh, with Jake Myers being optioned? Yeah, Chaz uh, continues to trend uh, very much the right way. He will be on the 1 o'clock bus today. Uh, we're going to look at him this afternoon, but our hope is that he should be good to go today. Uh, he and Mauricio Dubon have both done an excellent job in center field, and I would expect that the two of them will uh, get the majority of the playing time out there. Okay, Mark Berman, and back to Chandler. You're on mute, Mark. Sorry about that. Could you address the Jake Meyer situation and what your plans are for Jainer Diaz? So uh, it was a very difficult decision. Uh, to ultimately send Jake back to AAA, but felt like for him that this was the best thing. We have seen how good he can be at the major league level, uh, particularly on the defensive end. I think he is, uh, if not the best, one of the best defensive center fielders in, in baseball. We just weren't seeing it there physically. Uh, and we will review the uh, return to play process to determine if there were things that we could have done better to put him in a position to succeed at the major league level. Uh, we're hoping that this uh, return to Sugarland will be a very short-term thing. 
just to kind of, kind of give him a, a mental and physical reset so that he can return to the guy who uh, helped us down the stretch last year and, and got some big hits for us in that Chicago series before he went out. Uh, with regards to any other players or any other decisions on the roster, uh, that is all extremely premature. We have not finalized any decisions with regards to roster expansion uh, for September 1st at this time. Hey, Brian McTaggart. Uh, Dusty said the other day that uh, Alvarez's other hand is bothering him now. Um, do you have any update on, on his prognosis and uh, the issues he's suffering with his hands and if well he's going to be available to play uh, today? Yeah, it's something that has, has crept up a little bit recently, uh, and we just felt like giving him a day off was a, a good chance to get ahead of it. Uh, we'll get a look at him today, but our hope is that similar to uh, when he was battling uh, this with the other hand, that it will be relatively short term. And uh, if he's not available today, I fully expect him to be available tomorrow. Okay, Adam's going. Sorry, I'm good. All right. Mark Berman. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Does anybody else have any further questions? Okay, guys, thank you. Hey, Justin, can you give us an idea of kind of what the doctors told you about the images and uh, any sort of timeline they may have given you of when you could pick up a ball again and kind of start some baseball activity? Um, I'll, I'll start with the second part. I don't really have a, a specific timeline. Um, uh, it's just basically whenever, like, my calf is strong enough that I feel like I can do that. Um, you know, whether that's in a couple of days or more than that, I, I don't really know. Um, what the doctors said, um, was, I mean, look, there was an injury. Um, but when it comes to, uh, calf injuries, I feel like I, I really kind of dodged a bullet here where, um, the muscle isn't actually involved. It's more the fat. It's not more, it is the fascia, um, which, um, I feel, I feel pretty fortunate about because, uh, I didn't realize how serious even a very minor muscle calf injury can be. Um, you know, if that were to happen, uh, we'd be having a much different conversation, but, uh, apparently fascia heals much faster. Um, it's not uh, look, it is an injury. It's not, it's not nothing. Um, obviously I, I went on the IL. Um, so, you know, obviously that's, that's a bit disappointing, but, um, as far as the spectrum of calf injuries go, I feel like, uh, this was about as good a news as I could have gotten specifically because I did, you know, I did feel a, a, a pop. Um, and so usually that is attributed with some, with some muscle damage. Um, so fortunately the pop that I felt was my fascia and, and not the muscle. So, um, all in all, uh, you know, I think this is about as good a news as I could have hoped for. Okay, Mark Berman and Randy McElboy. Justin, how relieved were you when you got the news that it was, as James Click said, you touched on it, it was about as good as you could get given the alternative? Um, you know, I think I was more relieved. Uh, I, I, I guess I didn't – nobody nobody really told me or I didn't really know um, how – serious even a small grade tear of the uh, of of that muscle um uh could have been uh so i mean kind of instinctually i thought it wasn't bad at first you know i was like okay uh, i definitely have a small injury but you know i don't think it's serious i don't think it'll be too long but uh, after the diagnosis was was given to me when i was talking to the doctors um, about it is when I realized how close it came to being, you know, potentially season ending. Um, you know, if, if the, if the soft tissue of the muscle fibers had been involved, um, you know, I, I, I think we're, we're looking at a matter of weeks without even, you know, picking up a ball or being able to do much. So obviously that brings into jeopardy the season and some of the playoffs. So, um, you know, yeah, I guess, uh, after, you know, after I got in the car, after kind of talking to all the, everybody is when, and talking to, I was talking to my wife about it. Uh, she was very intrigued, obviously what, what the diagnosis was. And I think that's when it kind of hit me when I was explaining to her that, you know, this could have been, could have been really bad. So, um, you know, look, I'm not saying that, <laughs> you know, we're out of the woods or anything is perfect. Uh, there's still an injury there that I have to heal, but, um, you know, as far as, 
uh, being relieved uh, uh, from when I got the news, I, I would say, yeah, definitely. Okay, Randy, then Adam, go ahead, Randy. Hey, Justin, uh, can you describe like the, maybe the last 48 hours where the discomfort level is right now? Have you seen any improvement or is it strictly you're laying off, off of it right now and just uh, reassessing how you guys are going to attack this? Yeah, um, you know, it got it got pretty sore. It is still sore. Um, I'm, I'm laying off of it for a few days, um, you know, based on what all of the doctors have said, uh, you know, like I mentioned, that fascia heals pretty quickly. So I think just trying to give it its time to heal before I push it, um, you know, going on the IL, I, I, I think, you know, pretty clearly, I, I, I don't need to try to get back and, um, and this, you know, faster than I should. Um, um, like I said, there's no exact time frame, but, you know, it did get fairly sore. Um, it is still a bit sore, but I would say each day, you know, even, even, uh, the day after, um, it's been getting better fairly quickly. So, I mean, these are all good signs. I noticed that I have more range of motion. Um, my, my gait is getting better. Um, you know, calf is such a tough muscle. I see why it's difficult to rehab because, you don't really have any other really many other muscles to support yourself when you're like walking and stuff. Um, you know, as opposed to like a hamstring or groin or other lower extremity muscles, you know, you have a lot of supporting casts that can help you move around with that calf when it doesn't want to work, man, it's really hard to walk. So, um, that's to me, a big indication of how I'm feeling is each day when I wake up and get out of bed, it's like, okay, I, I feel like I can walk a little more normal today without any pain. So, and that's happening very quickly. Okay. Adam. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You kind of just describe what happened on that play. And did you have any, I don't know, uh, inclination to maybe try and stay in the game or did you know right away that you needed to come out? Yeah. So, um, <laughs> you know, I feel like very rarely does the game catch me, uh, 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 you know, by surprise uh, anymore. Um, you know, I feel like I've kind of ingrained most of the typical muscle memory type, you know, cover first base when the ball's hit over here, go there type of thing. Um, I found myself on that play kind of spectating, um, thought the ball was going to be thrown into second base and, you know, wasn't sure if, uh, um, if uh, he was going to tag or not. And then all of a sudden there ends up being this, you know, rundown that I wasn't really expecting. And I kind of look over to first base as Mullins was running to second and there was nobody there as Yuli was trailing into second. Um, I didn't have the wherewithal to think, okay, well, there's two runners in a second. It doesn't really matter what happens. I just thought, oh my gosh, what if he turns around after Yuli throws the ball and there's nobody at first base? So I, I went to go sprint to first. And when, as soon as I kind of dropped step to go run, I felt a pop, uh, right in the like middle of my calf. Um, so, I mean, I initially was like, okay, well, um, definitely something's wrong. Um, let me just walk it off off the field and, and, and reassess. And kind of, as I was walking off the field, uh, it just started tightening up a little bit more and more. And as I was walking through the dugout, I just told Jeremiah, Hey, uh, come, come talk to me down under the tunnel and told him what happened. It was pretty immediate. I, I, yeah, I think I knew right away that I, I shouldn't, I shouldn't stay in the game. You know, there was, you know, there's always a little part of you that thinks I want to try to pitch through this, but I don't think that's ever a smart thing to listen to. Um, you know, it's only gotten me in trouble in the past. So, uh, you know, I've learned from those mistakes and, um, you know, just, just, uh, I think it was pretty clear that I shouldn't be in the game anymore. Did they, did they say to you what type of damage could have been done had you stayed in the game? No. Okay. Mark Berman. Justin, obviously with the season you're having, this is disappointing, but given all that you've been through to get to this point, does it make this disappointment easier to deal with? Um, you know, I, I think throughout the course of the season, look, you never want to spend time on the, on the IL, uh, I mean, in an ideal world, but, um, you know, if this can be a shorter stint and I can just do my 15 days and I, this is not what I'm saying time frame wise, I don't really, the time frame is based on how I heal. Um, but I'm optimistic that that can be quick. Um, you know, if I can just be on the IL for the 15 days and then get back out there, you know, that's a blip on the radar of an entire season. Um, and so if that's the case, then no, I'm not too disappointed. I obviously would feel much different if this thing lingers or, you know, had there been a real soft tissue injury that would have required much more time on the IL. Yes, that would have been disappointing. I'm, I'm, but I'm 
quite optimistic right now. And, um, you know, sometimes these things just happen. It was just kind of a freak moment. Like I said, the game kind of caught me off guard. I, you know, reacted and this happened, um, you know, uh, so, uh, no real, I, I'm not going to sit here and regret it. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, like I said, if it's only 15 days, then I feel like I dodged a bullet. Hey, Chandler Rome, then Adam Winkler. Justin, because it's a lower body injury, do you think you'll be able to kind of keep your arm in somewhat of normal working shape routine wise, even while you're on the IL? Uh, I hope so. You know, definitely taking a few days off. I'm also not somebody who typically gets really tight going days without throwing. Um, you know, I realized that during my, my elbow rehab, uh, when a few times we'd take a week off and really, as soon as I went back to throwing, it felt great. And I didn't feel like I took a step back at all. So, um, that I'm, I, I feel like I'm, I'm okay with. I also think one thing that's going to help the throwing is that it's not like I hurt my calf when I was pitching, I heard it going to run. Um, and I think that's an important distinction because, you know, typically the last thing that you're able to do uh, in a rehab process is the thing that you heard it doing. You know, if I were a sprinter or a, or a second baseman or a center fielder, I think we, you know, um, it, it might be a little bit more difficult. Um, but to be able to push laterally and throw a baseball is much different than, than kind of drop stepping and trying to sprint off a starting block, you know? So, um, you know, I, I, that's another thing that I think is going to help me be able to, uh, accelerate this process. Hey, Adam Winkler. Justin, two things for you. You've been so calculated in coming back from, from TJ. I wonder if, how that will help you with this, with, you know, kind of being smart and listening to your body. And second question, uh, how is your daughter adjusting to this? Does she understand that dad can't be as active as he's been here in the past? Good question. Um, you know, I think my entire career has helped me be more calculated with things like this. Um, you know, uh, just understanding my body a bit more and, um, you know, like anything, it, it, you know, you learn from mistakes and you learn from the past and, and, and I, you know, obviously I have made some mistakes in the past trying to push myself too much. Um, sometimes I haven't that, that drive to get back sometimes helps me. So, you know, I just have the, the wealth of information from my career, um, to help me and assist me in this, in this process. Uh, so yeah, it's probably going to be very calculated. Um, and then, yeah, my daughter, uh, I mean, one, she's excited to have me home a little bit more uh, for a couple of days at least. And then um, she's the only thing she's really uh, confused about. So, yeah, she, she sees me, uh, you know, obviously the last couple of days I've been limping around a little bit. And um, she asked me if I have a boo-boo. And the only thing I, it, she's having a hard time understanding that the boo-boo is underneath my skin. Um, she has she has a boo-boo on her knee right now from uh, she was she was out trying to uh, to ride a bike, and kind of scraped her knee a little bit. And, um, so she's like, it's like my boo-boo, but on the inside and so <laughs> it's, it's, it's cute and fun trying to explain it to her. But, um, yeah, she, she knows something's a little up.